a war on drugs in the Philippines. The president has called on police and citizens to kill suspected drug traffickers. So where does the country draw the line when it comes to this controversial crackdown? I'm Malika Bilal. I'm Femi OK, and you're in the stream. Cardboard justice, that's what some are calling the brutal crackdown on illegal drugs in the Philippines. The head of the National Police told a Senate probe on Monday that nearly 2,000 people have been killed by police and vigilante groups combined. Their crime? Using or selling drugs. Often next to the bodies in the street are cardboard signs identifying the victims as a user or pusher. President Rodrigo Duterte won a landslide victory in June after promising to hunt down those involved in the drug trade. And he's doing just that. There will be no let up in this campaign. Double your efforts. Triple them if need be. We will not stop until the last drug lord, the last financer, and the last pusher have surrendered or put behind bars or below the ground if they so wish. The statistics from the crackdown have made global headlines. United Nations experts have called on the government to stop the extrajudicial killings and comply with international human rights obligations. Police point to the drop in crime and the number of people that have surrendered as evidence their strategy is working. Until recently, the poorest communities have been targeted. But Duterte expanded his hit list to include more than 150 current and former government officials. President Duterte's approval ratings are sky high, but with the body count rising, when will the killings end? Here to discuss his war on drugs, we're joined by Vitalano Aguirre, Secretary from the Department of Justice in Manila, Philippines. In Calabu, Ariz Arugay is a political scientist from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. On the phone from Manila, Arechi Cristobal is an addiction specialist and a former addict himself. And in New York, Philem Kine, Deputy Director of the Asia Digi Division of Human Rights Watch. So, gentlemen, it's good to have you here. Secretary, just so that we're... Um, really understand what is going on in the Philippines right now. The headlines are very lurid, the pictures are very lurid, but what did the president actually say? What has he given police permission to do? Well, uh, even during the campaign, uh, the president is very clear on this matter, that uh, in his uh, administration is going to do everything to stop drugs, crimes, and corruption. So that's the uh, program of his administration. All right. And that's what he's doing now. Phelan, that sounds entirely reasonable, but... Well, uh, what the government of the Philippines under President Rodrigo Duterte has done is that they have launched this near unprecedented bloodbath on the streets of Philippine cities. Uh, we have numbers approaching more than 2,000 individuals who have been slaughtered since uh, President Duterte took office. Uh, more than 700 of those alone by Philippine police. That's a tenfold increase from the numbers of drug suspects killed by the police in the first six months of this year. So what's happening is absolutely appalling. It is uh, completely running roughshod, disregarding the, the concept of rule of law. This is a national emergency, and the Philippines government, and particularly President Duterte, are instead cheerleading and praising this campaign by the police as proof of the, of the success of this war on drugs. It's absolutely appalling, and it requires the government to put a stop to this as soon as possible, or the killing is just going to get out of control. So it's interesting you say that. I, I want to um, bring in this uh, comment from someone on Twitter. This is Rip Stevenson. He says, it takes extreme measures to deal with an extreme situation. Now, he's not in the Philippines, but we are hearing from people who are there. This is a video comment we got from Clement, and he explains why he's okay with this. The surrender of hundreds of thousands self-confessed drug users and pushers reaffirms the renewed faith and trust in President Duterte. He's uniting people to combat illegal drug trade. 
His campaign against drugs is far from perfect, but a generation of Filipinos have been saved from this scourge of society and destroyer of lives. This year was my first time to vote for a president, and I am proud to say that my vote was worth it. So Aries, he says we've been saved from the scourge of society. Can you explain um, how other Filipinos might be feeling? And are they similar to what Clement is saying? Well, indeed, uh, President Duterte had a big and a huge electoral mandate. And his approval ratings are like 91%. But we know that President's political capital is non-renewable. It can decrease any time. And this depends on to what extent the, po uh, the president becomes a, an object of polarization. Right now, this war is exacting a toll on society because you have a heated and mean exchange of opinions, and there's no middle ground here. People are either cheering or either really condemning uh, this, this drug war. I think what is needed is a more nuanced approach where the government addresses the concern on human rights but at the same time, uh, implement a policy where illegal drugs could be combated. Right now, I don't see that balance. That's the problem. Secretary? Well, uh, actually, we must uh, take this in the proper context. You must remember that about two years ago, the number of drug addicts in the Philippines, or drug pushers, or, is about uh, 3 million. Now, that was the last figure piled by the Philippine uh, Drug Enforcement Authority, PDEA. After two years, we could safely say that this would be around 3,600,000 or 3,700,000. So you will see that this is really uh, a crisis in the Philippines. So there are 700,000, about 700,000 who surrendered to the authorities. But uh, I think uh, we have to take this in the proper perspective, and these are desperate times. We are in crisis, and uh, we believe that uh, the number of deaths, and uh, the police said that they were, and uh, President Duterte was very clear on this matter, that there will be no killing of unarmed uh, offenders. Meaning to say that you use force only when your life is in danger, and that's what the uh, police forces in the Philippines uh, are doing. We must remember also that many of the deaths were caused by the drug lords themselves. They are afraid that these uh, lieutenants of them will be might, be, might squeal on them, might be witnesses against them, and so they were the ones who killed. Of course, we could not discount also the uh, killings, uh, the extrajudicial killings uh, of the uh, other people. Okay, Finn, what do you want to add? Uh, I find it absolutely appalling that anyone with a legal background, let alone the Secretary of Justice of the Republic of the Philippines, would speak out in favor of a campaign which absolutely trashes the concept of rule of law and was which resulted in the deaths of almost 2,000 people in just seven weeks. And to shrug and say, these are desperate times. This is an absolute assault on the concept of rule of law. These 700 victims of the police and the 1,000 other victims of extrajudicial killings, all presumed or supposedly uh, drug dealers or drug, uh, or drug users, we have no idea who those people were, what they might have done or what might have been, because there's been no investigation, they never saw a lawyer, they never made it to a court. Instead. The president and his government, including Vitaliano, seem very comfortable in just telling the public these are bad people and they deserve to be killed. This is a, a, a platform for governance. This is savagery, sir. That's not correct. Uh, actually, the police pen are, in, are instructed not to kill people. They are supposed to arrest them. But when they fight back, then the president has instructed them that they must first protect themselves. And they so, Vitaliano, this criminal. Vitaliano, I want to ask you then, why? Take a look at the statistics. In seven weeks, the Philippine police 
at the urging of and encouragement of President Duterte, have killed more than 700 people in seven weeks. In the first six months of this year, police killed 68 people in anti-drug operations. We have seen a 10, more than tenfold increase in these killings. Do you not think, as a person with legal background, as someone who is the Secretary of Justice, that that surge in killings might merit an official urgent investigation? And for you to simply say that the police said these people fought back speaks to a profound disingenuousness toward the reality and history of the police in terms of their role in extrajudicial killings in the Philippines, beginning in Davao City and also in Tagum City. Sir, you know better than this. This is a dangerous road for the Philippines to travel. You should be speaking out for rule of law and for the rights of suspects, not being a cheerleader for those who will call for extrajudicial killings as a crime solution. So I hear what you're saying, Philem, but I want to give you um, a point counterpoint. So this is someone who would disagree with you. This is a video comment we got from Rinaldo. Have a listen. It is important for the Philippines to continue its war on drugs, not only that it is a campaign promise of Rodrigo Duterte, but it's also very important for the Philippines not to turn into a narco state. Right now, uh, all of the Filipinos are basically being surprised at the magnitude of the drug problem in, in the Philippines. It's now reaching to the very far flung barangays in the Philippines. And uh, to note, it's also important to note that at least at a minimum, 10% of the population is now heavily engaged in drugs, not only pushing it, but also using it. it so he says these policies are necessary so the Philippines doesn't turn into a narco state. There's pushback on Facebook where we're live right now. This is Fernando, and he says that doesn't solve the problem. Treatment for addicts and social measures do solve it. Killing doesn't prevent anyone from consuming drugs. Rishi, I want to go to you with this because I know you're an addiction specialist, so you work with yeah. people uh, that Fernando is talking about. Yeah. What do you make of this drug war? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I agree with um, what uh, what was said uh, just a few seconds ago. Um, although I agree, uh, I agree about uh, President Duterte's focus on on drugs, but I think the problem here is it's um, his rhetorics. It's when he started talking very harshly and very. Um, very fiercely about you know like if they don't surrender they get killed i think this is where where it all started and um in fairness although in fairness to the government um, i'm also doing some work for the department of health and right now we're actually training um local government physicians and health workers to actually address um and to help the surrenderies on, on how to get help. Right. Ariz, what I'm hearing as part of the debate is desperate measures for desperate times. If I spent some time in the Philippines and wanted to see how big an impact drug use was having um, and drug trafficking was having, what would you show me? What would I see? Well, the, you must understand that it's very difficult to take a black and white position on this. On the other hand, I understand uh, the issues of human rights advocates and those who want to defend uh, civil rights in the, in, in the Philippines. But this is coming from decades of government neglect. Uh, human rights continue to be lofty goals, concepts that ordinary Filipinos cannot really put a lot of concreteness into it. And therefore, it's very difficult when you have people trying to push, you have to respect human rights when People are like, we still have nothing. Our, our livelihoods are destroyed. We have nothing to show for. And if you have a president that comes and says that I will rescue you from evils of society, it's very easy for ordinary Filipinos who have not had anything in life to somehow see the, the, the wisdom of such policies mm -hmm. to the point of desperation. And I think this is the problem of the Philippines itself is a highly unequal society, and therefore this war is being pitted as a as a war against the poor, 
But at the same time, you don't see that because drugs have affected every level of society in the country. And um, I think what the, the Duterte government must do is to ensure that this is not being pitted against any particular class, against any particular group. And this is a campaign that is launched uh, regardless of who gets hit. Philem, have you been to the Philippines? Um, I would, I would also like to add, and uh, I think, uh, I believe yes, the government can. should also start focusing on, you know, how to deal with the the disease of addiction, uh, not mm -hmm. only about, you know, reinforcement or supply reduction, um, but also demand reduction. Right. So, how do we improve the treatment centers? How do we improve the treatment programs? Uh, for the drug addict, for this drug addict. Right. So, so, if, so just bear in mind that um, if somebody is maybe a drug addict or a drug pusher, they're taking drugs, and then the police are trying to have a conversation with them, they may not be uh, the most competent to make a good decision. This is what the president said the police should do if anybody resists. Have a listen to this. But if the resistance is violent, thereby placing your life in jeopardy, shoot and shoot him dead. Can I be more clearer than that? So that's not much of a drug program, Vitaliano, Secretary. That's not really dealing with the, the core issue with drugs and drug use in the Philippines. Or am I missing something? Secretary. We must know where the president is coming from. You know uh, that we have about uh, three million seven hundred thousand drug addicts, and uh, you should know also uh, what is the effect of the Philippine society. There are so many, so much crimes in the Philippines. Uh, uh, well, drug addicts or fathers raping their daughters. Uh, one year, uh, children being hammered to death. By this, uh, by these drug addicts, and uh, these are the uh, situation in our country. And uh, as you as you said, desperate times calls for this desperate measures. So <laughs> this is what the president is doing, and uh, we support it. You must. Uh, when President Duterte was uh, elected by by a plurality of more than 16 million uh, voters. Uh, that is around only one third of the Philippine electorate. Yeah. But only after three weeks in power, or uh, after the assumption of office, he already got a rating of 91 approval rating right. of the Filipino people. Yeah. What does that mean? It means that uh, those who voted even against uh, President Duterte, the two thirds of that 91 percent, changed their mind and found Duterte to be the leader that they're really uh, they wanted to head the country. All right, so, so basically what so, you're saying is that the president uh, has support. This, this uh, may... Must... Yeah, okay. R Reggie, right. what were you trying but, to say? But... Yes, go ahead. Um, right, right. Uh, Femi, I, I wanted to point out that electoral mandates and, and, and approval ratings are, are not constants. Uh, these is an electoral mandate could be given, but it can also be challenged in the sense that if Filipinos see that this drug campaign is really exacting a toll on human rights and the rule of law, which, is, which has become problematic even decades ago, then I think it will be very difficult for, for the Duterte government to continue justifying this uh, drug war without really a comprehensive framework, a policy that includes what Reci has been saying about addressing drug addiction, addressing it as a health problem, and not just a a, a crime problem. Uh, it has to be a broader perspective on this. And that requires a lot of infrastructure, a lot of logistics, and a lot of other agencies involved, except for the police. I want to share one uh, thought from someone who shared this with us on Twitter um, about this drug war. This is Gagin Pressing, who says, it makes a joke out of our democratic principles, and it perverts our already difficult to deal with justice system. So to give our audience just a little bit of a taste of what that justice system looks like, the end result of it in some cases, uh, this is a feature from The Atlantic. And I'm showing you a few pictures here of just one jail uh, in Manila. Uh, this is a photo from Getty. 
the AFP. And you can see uh, prisoners really stacked on top of each other, on top of a, a staircase. Uh, here's one more. You can just see them in the background there as a police officer uh, locks one of the gates. So, Reishi, I know that you are 21 years sober, but if you were using in this time yeah. under this drug war, do you think that this is where you would be in one of those jails? Um, well, definitely I will be uh, if I'm still using. You know, I was just talking to a friend the other day, and I said, you know, this will be the first. If you're using today, if you're using drugs today in the Philippines, this will be one of the worst days uh, of your using. Um, not only because, you know, uh, the fear of being caught, but also um, the, the supply of drugs are now very uh, getting scarce. Um, but we also have to remember that, um, you know, we were able to identify, you know, talking about the pushers, we were able to identify two types of pushers now, uh, the pusher user and the sole pusher. The reason I'm mentioning this because um, the secretary mentioned earlier that uh, that if they resist, they will be they could be shot. Yeah. But um, you have to remember that the pusher user they are also intoxicated uh, at some point, and when someone is intoxicated, they are considered mentally incapable. Um, mentally ill or psychologically incapable. So uh, shooting them or killing them um, is actually, um, there's a very thin line uh, about that issue uh, because they're, at that time they are mentally incapable of making uh, Richie, a Richie, I, I hear decision. what you're saying. It's like murdering somebody because they're mentally ill. Yeah, and I think that Retchi makes a, a good point in the sense that this sharp increase in killings, both by the police and by unknown vigilante killers, demands an urgent impartial investigation. And the fact that, uh, you know, Secretary of Justice Vitaliano and President Duterte are happy to sit on their hands and, in fact, encourage more such outrages, it really isn't acceptable. I also want to speak to the point that you made with regards to the conditions inside uh, Philippine detention centers. Even before this quote-unquote war on drugs began, Philippine detention centers were humanitarian disasters. They are already very, very overcrowded to capacity. People spend months or years trying to see a judge, get a court date. And this number of people who have surrendered to the police as the only solution to safety uh, have made that situation even worse. So we have a sharp rise in police killings, extrajudicial killings, and we have this humanitarian crisis Ian. inside detention centers. So Ian, where, where I was that the, back to Secretary I, of Justice. I, I hear, I hear I what you're saying, Felix. I, I want to show. I want to show the Secretary of Justice something, if I, if I may. Felix, hold, hold, hold tight for a moment. I want to. This is a very visual. Um, uh, incredible story to be sharing with the world and what's happening in the Philippines right now. I want to show you a picture that made headlines not just in the Philippines but around the world. Uh, Secretary, have a look at this picture. I, I know you're aware of this picture. This woman is holding the body of her husband who was an alleged drug pusher. When the president saw this, he called it Philippine dramatics. When you see it, what do you see here? Well, uh, I've seen the uh, picture uh, depicted in one of our uh, broadsheets, and I believe that uh, that is a setup. Ah. The picture is a setup. You don't believe this the, is real? Uh, by the broadsheet. If it was real, let's say, let's say, let's, let's go with you on this one. If it, if you mm. wasn't a setup, if it is real, what's your reaction? Well, he's one of the. Uh, those killed uh, by this by the president's war on drugs. But you have to uh, right. b remember that 92% of all barangays, so you're listening of all the to regions the within Secretary Metro Manila of are Justice for the Philippines. Secretary of Justice, don't go away. We're going to take you to our post show with Philem Kine, Deputy Director of the Asia Division of Human Rights Watch. Ariz Arugai is a political scientist with the Uni University of Philippines, Dili Man. And also Rechi Cristobal from Manila, Philippines. He is a recovering um, and sober from taking drugs. This conversation at stream.outazio.com. Thanks for watching, everybody.
Hello again. We are talking about the deadly crackdown on illegal drugs in the Philippines. We're going to pick up the conversation with the fallout from what's been happening in the last couple of months in the Philippines. Malika. Mm. And so, of course, in talking about the fallout, the main question is, is this policy, is this war working? On Facebook Live, we got this comment from someone who says it is. This is Yair. He says, the drug lords and protectors have their days numbered. He is the only president, meaning Rodrigo Duterte, that vows eliminating corruption across all government agencies and offices. I want to share one more uh, comment. This is via Twitter. This is Lilibeth. She, she pretty much agrees. She says, so far, so good. We're awaiting the results of an investigation because Congress uh, has launched a two-day probe into this. Only those with political or criminal motives are angered. What would you say to that, Aries, that only those who are upset about this policy are those who have criminal intentions themselves? Well, it's, um, it's easy to say that, but I've, I've also heard a lot of people who started supporting uh, President Duterte, who now sees a different perspective, who believes that if this war is not nuanced to the point of respecting human rights as well as taking into consideration uh, the freedoms that Filipinos have fought for over the decades, then I think the, the fallout will increase. I, I see this as a very polarizing issue in the future. Unless addressed by the government, uh, you will have this dividing Philippine society. And we've seen polarized societies around the world. It's not going to look any good in the future. Secretary of Justice, does any of this criticism, the critique, does that move you? Does it mean that policy might change a little bit at all? I don't think that it will change. I believe that the uh, president is uh, very determined in pursuing this war on drugs. Oh. Uh, we must remember that this uh, situation in the Philippines is a product of long time neglect. We have been neglected uh, by uh, the past uh, administrations. As a matter of fact, we have uh, presented a picture of our uh, deplorable conditions of our jails, we have no rehabilitation, but which do we prefer? Do we need to build uh, prisons, good prisons, building first, uh, rehabilitation centers before we uh, go or proceed with our war on drugs? Or could we do it now even though the prison conditions are deplorable? As a matter of fact, we are, uh, the number one evidence here is the city of Davao. Davao is one of the most, uh, the city uh, where the president came from is one of the most peaceful uh, city in the Philippines with rehabilitation centers, with good prisons, but these are not duplicated in the country. Now, uh, this coming November, we'll be bidding a one billion prison facility we built in uh, Nueva Ecija, in Fort Agsasay, Nueva Ecija. Meaning to say that the president is also doing the other things which should be done long, long time ago. But we could not wait for these prison facilities to be built before we go against this drug. All load. right, so Secretary, let me just remind you, this is from Philem's, um uh, Twitter feed. So I'm just going to show you this again. I don't really need to remind you, but this is for our audience here. This is a detention facility. Because so many people were afraid of being killed as drug users or drug pushers, uh, a lot of people actually surrender and say, here I am, and were uh, taken into custody. This is where they end up. How is it possible for you to have a policy and not be thinking about where do we put all of these people? Did you, did you not plan this through? Did you not think through? Uh, as I've said, these are products of long time neglect. There are about 700,000 who surrendered. And as I said, Secretary, did only... you think this through? Did you think if we say to drug pushers or drug users, if you resist, we're going to kill you, um, and the number of, of deaths and, and killings go up uh, exponentially, and then suddenly your detention facilities are going to be full? That is bound to happen. Did you think about that before you put this into practice? So it's quite a simple yes or no answer, really. Well, uh, which do you want? We build first. The, the, we build the uh, prison uh, uh, facilities first, or do we go against these people? Choose. If you're in the Philippines, we will choose to kill uh, these drug lords. Then wait uh, for these uh, prison facilities. That's what the uh, 
Secretary of Justice yeah. said with a, a drug, he keeps saying drug pin, drug kingpins and drug lords. Um, the, the, the photograph, sir, that you said uh, you, that you, you accused the, 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 the photographer of faking, hundreds of journalists were there. It's a real photograph. The victim was a pedicab driver who was a suspected Shabu methamphetamine user. Mm -hmm. He was one of the poorest of the mm -hmm. poor. And what we see is that the vast majority of victims, these almost 2,000 Filipinos who've been killed in the last seven weeks under your president's war on drugs are some of the poorest, most vulnerable, most marginalized citizens. This, sir, is not a war on drugs. This is a war on the poor. And you, you point to Davao City as a model for crime control, sir. Human Rights Watch has documented the existence of a vicious death squad in Davao City during the 22 years that now President Duterte was mayor. And that death squad was operated, paid for, organized by elements of the municipal government and the police that killed hundreds of quote unquote undesirables, including street children as young as 14. If this is your vision of a safe and secure and orderly Philippines, then the Philippine, the Philippine people have much to fear because rule of law is absolutely absent in your equation of safety and security. You know, Philem, I, I think there's someone online who, think, yeah, who would agree with what Philem said. To I'm, I'm going to go to you, Rasha, yeah. but I just wanted to get this personal story across. This is Mary Beth. She says, I have never felt this fear at any time in my life. Fear of being shot at in some crossfire or just finding a dead body on my doorstep. So that's one person's perspective. I want to play a video comment, Rasha, and I'll direct this to you because it pivots really well, uh, basically off of what Philem was saying about this being a war on the poor. Have a listen to Kenneth. The big problem here in the Philippines is classism and the fact that as long as it is poor people uh, who are being killed, then nobody really seems to care. Some people are outraged, but the decision makers will do nothing substantial to change it. So, Reishi, do you see this as being a classist fight? Um, yeah, I think I would agree there. Uh, I think it's also important to note that uh, it's surprising that uh, the pushers that are being killed are the poor ones. I haven't, uh, I haven't really heard any story uh, of a rich pusher or a middle class pusher that's being killed. So I'm now very curious. Why is it? Why are they only targeting the poor, uh, so-called pushers? We don't even know sometimes if they, if some of them. I mean, I know some of. Some of them are pushers, but we don't really know the others if they are really pushers. And sometimes I wonder, are they really pushers or is the, or are they cleaning up their own mess? You know? Sometimes I get this feeling that the police force is just cleaning up their own mess. Mm. That's why these killings are increasing. Aris, what were you trying to say? Go ahead. Right. I, I think this is, the, uh, this is the elements of a possible fallout unless addressed by the Duterte government. I think the Duterte presidency does not want this to be a war on the poor. Uh, because uh, the Duter during the campaign, Duterte was not, did, what, did not show off as a populist president or someone that will crack down on, on, based on classes. And um, his announcement of government officials and judges being linked to drugs, I think is, is a good sign that he will look at the powerful and the powerless at the same, with the same lens as long as you are violating the law on illegal drugs. The problem is uh, the time is that it's so short so far. We have not given the, the, the amount of time that is needed to address this. But it's important that the government yeah. assures the public that this is not a war being waged on any sector of society, that this continues to be consistent uh, and and therefore, even the human rights of the poor should be respected. Guess I'm going to put a pause in the um, conversation I for think now I would because. Agree there. Um, in fact, Reggie, I'm going to give you the, the, no. the penultimate word to finish up and then I'm going to thank everybody. So go ahead, Reggie. What do you want to add? Yeah, I think I would agree there. Uh, in fact, I also, I, in a way, I also do agree with the secretary. Uh, this, is, this drug war is a, is a neglected, you know. 
for many years, the you know, the, I think President Duterte is the only president who really focused on the drug and really, you know, is really fighting for the drug campaign. Ma, the only thing that we kind of notice is, um, I think this campaign uh, caught us all, you know, unprepared. Um, all of a sudden, there are a lot of surrenders uh, coming out, and mm-hmm. uh, we, in, we in the Department of Health, because I do some work for the department, we're now caught, uh, un, uh, you know, uh, unprepared. You know, yeah. we're just actually now developing uh, programs to deal with them. Sure. Um, so, in a way, what's happening now is good and bad. It's good because now um, we're now really seeing that there's really a big drug problem in the Philippines. It's bad because we were it, we were caught unprepared, and we don't know what to do with them. So that's why I've been always harping that I I hope the drug campaign should not only be okay. should not only be uh, for the drug lords for the drug cutters, but also try to study how to improve the treatment programs because you know this thing uh, you know. Catching the drug lord, killing the pusher. This will not stop the drug, you know, the drug addiction in the Philippines. The drug addicts will just look for another kind of drug, okay. a legal one, or they'll come up with something ah, new again. Very interesting so, point, Richie. It's a good point that you leave us on. Thank you so much, Richie Ariz, Film, and also Secretary of Justice for the Philippines. It's been a really interesting conversation hearing your very strong perspectives. Malika, where do you want to leave us? I'll leave us with two competing uh, points of view. This is Bloggy on one hand, who says, at present, nobody is holding the president accountable, not even the media, and he's cultivating a culture of impunity. But a supporter on Twitter, Lily Beth, says he's angering a good lot of powerful people, from generals to judges to politicos, but the hard way, yes, but it's good for us people. Thanks for staying with us to the end of the stream. We will continue online, hashtag A Day Stream, or on Facebook. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.